Hello and welcome to another installment of Let's Play Mass Effect 3. Last time we went over to Grissom Academy to rescue it from a Cerberus attack, found Jack there teaching biotics students, rescued her and the students as well as David Archer. He was there, which was really great. That's like one of my favorite parts of this game. Anyway, now I guess we really don't actually, despite there being a lot of things in my journal, most of these are just like go and grab things. Uh, <laughs> so we don't actually have much to do other than the next priority mission. So I figure what we'll do is we'll hit the galaxy map, see if there's any places that I haven't actually, uh, let's go a little faster, Shepard. Oh yeah, let's check email first. Did I get anything new? No, we have absolutely no email. Great, not even spam mail. <laughs> Trainer, anything up? Commander. Nope. Okay, then let's check the map and see if there's any other systems that I need to search before we go to uh, Sir Cash. Alright, we're gonna go this way. Plot the jump. Okay, so let's see. That's done. Kite's Nest, I think we would just were there. I have a feeling that's over one with Reapers right now, so we probably shouldn't go there. Okay, Hades Gamma, I'm pretty sure we did that too. We have to meet with diplomats here in the Anos Basin. Yeah, that's Sarkesh. Okay, that's done. Minos Wasteland, looks like we haven't been there yet. We should try that one out. The Shrike Abyssal also is available, and Sigurd's Cradle is 50%. Okay, well, let's try Minos Wasteland. And we'll see. If it is, that means I've been here. Okay, no, it's not. There's absolutely nothing here, actually. Okay. <laughs> I found something. Good. And the Reapers have found us. Let's see, what is this? Pietas. Though Pietas has a combination of features that make terraforming a possibility, the rights to the planet have been tied up in Citadel Council courts for the past nine years. The running joke is that by the time the Council finally gives the go-ahead to colonize the planet, Pietas will have evolved life of its own. Home to comfortable temperatures and a mild atmosphere of mostly nitrogen and argon, Pietas could be habitable with the addition of oxygen-producing cyanobacteria. Its crust is high in silicates and carbon, allowing for easy fabrication of construction materials. Smugglers, pirates, and others, other unregistered starships sometimes touch down on Pietas to lay low or make repairs. Civilian travel is not advised. Is every single freaking planet in this galaxy overrun by pirates? How many pirates can there be? Like, don't they eventually run out of civilian frigates? Do they just pirate each other? Orbital distance, 1.8 AU. Orbital period, 2.4 Earth years. Radius, 5,430 kilometers. Day length, 26.5 Earth hours. Atmosphere pressure, 1.26 Earth atmospheres. Surface temperature, 21 Celsius. And surface gravity, 0.7 G. All right, before I start the scanner on that, let's read the rest of these. Okay, we've got Veer. Or Weir. <laughs> A pressure cooker planet with a thick nitrogen heavy atmosphere, Weir is largely ignored by the galactic community. Probes have revealed a crust of nickel and scorched carbon, both of which can be found in abundance elsewhere at far lesser temperatures. Orbital distance 0.6 AU, orbital period 0.5 Earth years, radius 8,162 kilometers, day length 44.4 Earth hours, atmosphere pressure 1 point, or 1 point, yeah, <laughs> no. <laughs> 106.22 Earth atmospheres. That's a big difference. Surface temperature is 778 Celsius and surface gravity 2.1 G. Alright, that does not sound like a very happy planet to be on. Iktas. Alright, home to the famous iron canyons, Iktas has reddish iron oxide dust, hematite. Hematite, sorry. Uh, covering much of its surface and significant blue cobalt deposits that freckle the terrain. Turian explorers have discovered hot springs in the polar ice caps heated by magma in the planet's crust. In a strange combination of science and hucksterism, a small facility exports water from these springs, 
which is bottled and sold as having medicinal properties. <laughs> Great. The funds are then used to maintain a research station, which has discovered some fossil evidence that Iquitas once harbored microscopic life based on deoxyribonucleic acids in these springs. Okay. <laughs> so they used snake oil to fund research. Interesting. <laughs> Orbital distance. Well, I guess it's better than funding gambling or something. Orbital distance. 4 AU. Orbital period 8 Earth years. Radius 7,437 kilometers. Day length 51.6 Earth hours. Atmospheric, atmospheric pressure 0.49 Earth atmosphere. Surface temperature negative 85 Celsius. And surface gravity 1.6 G. Alright. Search this planet. Let's run this scanner. Start scanner. What are we looking for? Something over here. Oh, it moves so slow. Uh, it's so hard. Okay. Okay, we got credits. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Alright. Is that all in the system? No, there's one other thing. Alright, well, let's try hitting over here. More. There it is. Clock mass relay successful. jump. We gotta get away. Okay, the Ismar frontier. We've been there, right? I don't remember. Let's go again, just in case. It doesn't appear to have any numbers on it. Hey, a fuel depot. Do I need any fuel? Nope. Signal confirmed. Okay. Akila. Have we been here? Holy no. I don't think we have. I'll read these planets. Polino, a relatively small hydrogen helium gas giant, Polino remains undeveloped while its sister planet, Metaponto, garners all the attention. This was not always the case. In 2180, news stories seeded throughout the extranet claimed that Element Zero was being found on Polino's moons in record loads. This turned out to be a scam spread by the Dunawarachum Consortium, an Elcor corporation trying to scare up investors. After a small <laughs> those pesky Elcor, <laughs> after a small fleet of space probes scouted the area, the hype quickly deflated, and the myth only persists now in unwanted extranet email messages. So spam mail is what you're saying. Orbital distance, 8 AU. Orbital period, 22.7 Earth years. Radius, 37,052 kilometers. Day length, 16.5 Earth hours. Alrighty, next one. Let's try Aquila. Oh no, wait. This is Metaponto. Where was Aquila? I did see something called Aquila. <laughs> A hydrogen helium gas giant, Metaponto has developed a helium-3 fueling station funded by Elcor business interests who hope to bring enough attention to the system to attract terraforming investors and thus eventually develop, develop Volturno as a habitable world. Thus far, they have met with little success. Orbital distance 4.2 AU, orbital period 8.6 Earth years, radius 70,520 kilometers, day length 12.1 Earth hours. Alright, might as well recover whatever is here, as long as we're here. What's this one? Advanced biotic implants! Mm. How exciting. Okay, now where did I see Ocula? Why did I see an Ocula around here? Was I, like, imagining it? I'm so confused. Where did I read that? <laughs> oh, the system is Akila. Okay, now it makes sense. Oh, okay, I'm dumb. Ah, <sighs> Vecchio. Vecchio is a moderately sized terrestrial world with a thin, hot ma atmosphere of carbon dioxide, dioxide, and nitrogen. Initial surveys found trace amounts of iridium, but little else of interest in the silicate desert sands that cover much of the surface of the planet. On a recent tour, the Alliance survey sh surveyor ship Coop discovered a group of partial graves hidden in the equatorial mountain ranges. The ancient skeletons in the burial sites are obviously humanoid, but incomplete and poorly preserved, which has made them difficult to identify. 
Fragments of primitive ceramic grave goods were also found nearby. This rather raises further questions about who once traveled to this inhospitable planet since the closest garden world, Volturno, has no intelligent life. Human universities are planning further archaeological investigations. And then the Reapers came and ruined everything. Good job, guys. Orbital distance 1.1 AU, orbital period 1.2 Earth years, radius 6,443 kilometers, day length 39.1 Earth hours, azure pressure 0.79 Earth atmospheres, surface temperature 58 Celsius, surface gravity 0.82 G. Alrighty. Let's see, anything on you? Oh no, we've discovered 100% of what's here. Lapini. A hydrogen methane gas giant, Lapini and its moons have been curious, cur cursorily <laughs> scanned by space probes and found to have little in the way of rare resources. The galaxy at large considers it unremarkable. Don't say that! I'm sure it's a lovely planet. Orbital distance, 0.5 AU. Orbital period, 0.4 Earth years. Radius, ooh. See, it is an awesome planet. Look at that number. That's so cool. Radius. 56,666 kilometers. Yeah, that's a lot of sixes. Day length, 9.2 Earth hours. See? Every planet is special in its own way. <laughs> Volturno. Oh, I've been hearing a lot about you, Volturno. A so-called super-Earth, Volturno is home to organic life, but is nevertheless uninhabitable for the near future. Wait, what does that mean? uninhabitable for humans because apparently it's not for other things. Currently in an ice age, most of the planet from the latitude of 30 degrees north or south is a frozen wasteland, and so most organic life, limited to algae and lichens, reside near the equator. The strong gravity prevents any sapient species but Elcor from thriving on the planet, and the Elcor cannot breed the planet's atmosphere, which contains lethal amounts of carbon dioxide in addition to its oxygen. Small packs of Vorcha squatters are attempting to take the planet for themselves. Why is this not scrolling? There we go. Illegally. But most of them live miserable existences in the planet's crushing gravity and die from falls and medical complications. <laughs> that sounds awful. <laughs> Only terraforming on a massive scale would turn Volturno into a habitable world, and the Elcor lack the political camp capital with the Citadel Council to begin such an effort. Orbital distance 2.1 AU, orbital period 3 Earth years, radius 11,177 kilometers, day length 26.8 Earth hours, atmosphere pressure 0.83 Earth atmosphere, surface temperature negative 10 Celsius, and surface gravity 3.3 G. Okay, is that it for this system? They're just... There's one, two... Looks like... Did I miss something? Oh no, there was this one way out here. Okay. So we did. We've seen all of them. On to the next location. Where are we going? We're going to the Shrike Abyssal. We're hopefully... Be loud. Thank you. We're hopefully we will not be eaten by Reapers. Oh, we've got more than one thing. Urla Rest. Rast, sorry. Okay, let's go there. For Why does this keep beeping? Is there a thing right something. here? Yeah. Investigate. Wreckage. Ah, I don't need that right now. Okay, Reapers, calm down. Chill. Okay, but that's 50% of the assets in this system. Okay, let's go over to Urla Rast. It seems like there's only two things in this system as well, because it says we've recovered 25% from the entire one. Okay, Bovis Tor. Named the Shining Sea in an old Volus language, Bovis Tor is so named for its boiling surface rich in glowing hot alumina, flecked with dark ridges of carbon. Uh, its thick atmosphere of nitrogen and oxygen is no indicator of life, since the temperatures are simply too high. Orbital distance, 0.7 AU, orbital period 0.6 Earth years, radius 7,307 kilometers, day length 33.5 Earth hours, atmosphere pressure 8.39 Earth atmospheres, surface temperature 253 Celsius, and surface gravity 1.6 G. Alrighty, done with that one. Let's try this next one. What's this? Talisphia. 
that's a pretty name. Talisphia is a planet capable of supporting life, if that life happens to breathe ammonia. Discovered by Asari explorers, the planet was used as a bargaining chip by the Citadel Council, who quickly drafted a colonization agreement with its wealthy client race, the Volus. The Council would fund the Volus colonization effort in return for massive trade benefits. With uncharacteristic enthusiasm, an enormous Volus influx ensued and the council reaped the economic benefits for a dozen years before the colonization bubble burst. The reapers found Talisphia easy prey. The independent planet had a defense fleet only sufficient to handle small-scale actions. Its high population and industrial base once a deterrent to war with other terminus system worlds only served to attract a, large, a larger number of reapers than usual. That's so sad. <laughs> All the poor little Volus. <laughs> Colony founded 385 CE. Mm, that was a long time ago. Population 3.8 billion. Population estimates are pre invasion. Capital Usra Dao. Orbital distance 1.6 AU. Orbital period 2.0 or 2.0 Earth years. Radius 7,550 kilometers. Day length 33.8 Earth hours. Atmosphere pressure 6.15 Earth atmosphere. Surface temperature negative 25 Celsius. Surface gravity 1.7 G. Alrighty, next one. Dos Atab. An ice giant, Dos Atab, Sky Warden, has a bluish tinge from its hydrogen methane atmosphere. Its axial tilt causes its seasons to vary widely in temperature. Orbital distance 1.3 AU, orbital period 5.5 Earth years, radius 47,428 kilometers, day length 10.3 Earth hours. All right, let's start scanning this system. Signal confirmed. All right, let's scan this before the Reapers show up. Start scanner. Oh, this way. Uh, uh. <laughs> it moves so slow. Uh. There. Okay, we got a Prothean Obelisk. Lovely. Okay, Reaper's mad yet? They're getting there. Okay, then we're gonna zip around. We're gonna zip around. And attempt to locate the last thing. Nope. Reaper's eluded. No such luck. Oh well. Back over here. We have one last thing to find, I guess. Okay. I found something on one of these planets. I don't remember which one it was already. Obviously it wasn't- oh no, it wasn't on the planet. It was on the, uh... It was just in the middle of stuff. Okay. That's well, there's something on that successful. planet, but I can't retrieve it right now because there's Reapers. Whoa. Why did it just jump like that? 